You used to get a floppy disk on the cover of a magazine with some software on it. And if you're really lucky, you'd get a really old game that no one wanted to play free on the cover of the magazine. Now you can walk into the shop and purchase a magazine with a free computer on the front. The Raspberry Pi was developed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation as a sort of cheap general purpose computer that could be used to teach people how computers worked. So the aim was to sort of try and recreate the home computer boom that was around in the early 80s and they took the naming convention from the BBC Micro so they start off with the Model B and the Model A and then just like the BBC Micro went to the Model B Plus we have here they brought out the Model B Plus of the Raspberry Pi. It's got a nice set of USB ports, Ethernet port to connect to the network, HDMI out so you can plug it into your telly and USB for a standard mobile phone charger. So last Thursday on Twitter, Soars was getting up in the morning that they released a new one, the Raspberry Pi Zero. And the first thing that immediately hit you was the price, $5, less than the price of a movie ticket at the local cinema. And then I looked down a bit further on Twitter and I realized that they were giving them away on the cover of a magazine. That's how small it is compared to the floppy disk. What are we giving up to have such a cheap piece of kit? It's at least as powerful as the original Raspberry Pi. You can clock it up to a one gigahertz. It comes with 512 meg of RAM. It's about equivalent to a typical desktop or laptop machine in the mid 2000s in terms of CPU speed. So what have we actually got here? What have we got on it? Well, we've got a micro SD slot where we can put in an operating system and I've burnt one onto a SD card earlier, so we should be able to boot it up. We've got mini HDMI out to connect it to your TV. So you need a mini HDMI to normal HDMI connector. We have a USB port so we can plug some peripherals in and we have a power socket on a USB port. And that's about it. The other thing we've got is a row of uh, holes where we can solder in connectors to access the GPIO port so we can connect it up to other things like I did last year with the Christmas tree. So let's connect it up and see what happens. I've got an HDMI connector to this um, screen here. Is it a laptop we've got there? So no, it's not a laptop. This was developed by Motorola for the Atrix line of mobile phones. And the idea was that you dock your mobile phone in the back and then be able to use it as if it was a little computer. Don't think it ever really took off, but they're great for connecting things together. You've got HDMI input and USB connections to the keyboard and mouse. You need a few converters to make it all work but uh, it's great for sort of hacking with little things like Raspberry Pis. So we've got the HDMI connected to it, to a mini HDMI socket. And this is where things get a little awkward. The USB connector is a micro USB connector, the sort you normally use to charge your mobile phone, but it's being used this to connect peripherals. So you need to get hold of a converter before you can use this. You're gonna spend more than four quid because you're gonna to need to buy the converters unless you've already got them. I sort of fashioned my own out of a bit of an old motherboard, the cable off my digital camera, and uh, some paper clips. But anyway, it seems to, it serves the purpose. So I can connect up our, the keyboard and mouse built into here. There we are, that's connected up. And then the only thing that's left is to connect the power. You should see it start to boot up and you'll see the flashing lights. There we go. And then on the actual screen, we can see Linux booting up. And I've already configured this, so it should in a minute boot me to the desktop and we can start using it as a normal computer. There's got to be a drawback, there's got to be something, and I don't mean to be overly negative, but... So in terms of using it, I mean, once you get it started, we're up running the Raspberry environment, you can use it like any other Raspberry Pi. If you're a teacher, you get hold of one of these and for four quid, give everyone in your class their own computer to do some computer science stuff on it. Relatively easy to set up, the instructions for setting up the SD cards are dead easy to set up, and if they destroy it, well, at that price, it's probably not much more expensive than the exercise books they're writing in anyway, or the textbooks they're working from. So it's effectively disposable, I think. So what sorts of things can we do with it then? Well, it comes with some software built in. There's some programming environments. There's a C compiler in here, as well as some Java stuff, Python, Scratch, and so on. So standard Raspberry Pi environment's all there. The major feature that's missing, and I haven't mentioned it yet, is networking. By default, there is no connection to the internet on there. You can't plug it into an ethernet. There's no Wi-Fi. So if you want to take it online, then you'll need some sort of adapter. So I'm using a USB to ethernet adapter to connect it to the network. And so that works very well. So if we run a web browser, hopefully that will start up in a second. So these machines are roughly about the power of the early 2000s, but they're good fun to play with. 
So they might be slower than what you're used to day to day, but... Yeah, it's slower than your typical Mac or PC. I suppose it'd be a bit churlish to say it's a bit slow considering it costs $5. Well, yeah, I mean, it depends what you need it for. I mean, it's fast enough to do some things, but other things you'd probably want something more powerful. I mean, you could stick it behind your TV and use it to watch movies if you put a, a Wi-Fi dongle on it and stream video to it. So what's this? this it's coming up with YouTube, is it? Yep, it's coming up with YouTube. I think the reason it's slow is that I have a very dodgy adapter here which doesn't seem to work. The keyboard keeps cutting out as well, so don't take this as a view of the speed. So yeah, you are going to have to buy some adapters and uh, if you haven't got a keyboard or monitor you'd need one of them. But it is a fully functional machine and if you want to learn how to program or perhaps learn how to do hardware hacking, you've got the GPIO pins here which you can solder on some adapters and then you can connect it up to devices. So like I did the Christmas tree last year, you could create one using this and you could hide this in the box of the Christmas tree quite easily. You can get a case for this, in fact that's how I actually first saw it was released, I saw the tweet about the case rather than the actual device. So um, yep, there are cases available, probably cost more than the actual device. <laughs> Great, so I might go and get myself one. Ah, you'll be lucky, they're all sold out. <laughs> They've all gone. So yeah, yeah, no, um, it seems it's very, very popular. They seem to have sold out of all the ones they've made. I'm sure they'll be making more and they'll be available again soon. And it's very, very difficult for people who, who go into a bad place and use a card because if, if you complain to your bank, then the strip club owner will just say, well, he was with four girls all